Hi there, everybody. This is Chris Schmidt from Grayscale Gorilla, and welcome to the next part of the training for Signal. So, uh, what are we talking about this time? This time, we're going to be talking about the feedback tab. So, instead of doing something like the the doing something like the position, why don't we do something a little more interesting, like color? So, we can do the color in a channel here. Uh, actually, I think if we apply it to an object, that would work well. So, we're going to make a new material, and we're going to create a signal tag on the cube. Now we can apply this to anything because it's going to be on a color, but we're probably, we, you know, we'll just put on the cube because we already have it. And we're going to apply the color onto the cube. And now what do we want signal to drive? Well, I think we want to drive the luminance. So I'm gonna turn off color, go to luminance, drag in the color and drop it straight on the signal tag and it will automatically change its icon to show it. So if we go click on signal, then you see that we're going from black to white. This is the end value. But our time, our strength, is set all the way to full all the time. So it'll always be white. But if we drag this down, then our cue will see update as we hit play. It's going to transition between those two colors. So that's all good. Um, so we get a nice smooth transition from black to white. Now, uh, let's add some modification on top of that. Let's create a sine wave. So we got a sine wave, and this is adding the it's adding gray which is the the midpoint of the values it's adding it both negatively and positively and it's on a 90 frame loop as well now we don't want this applied nearly as strong so we could there's a bunch of different ways to to have this effect but why don't we set this loop point a lot shorter so this is constantly going up and down but this is constantly pushing it to the extremes which is which isn't what we want so what we could do is grab our strength and pull that down to maybe like 10 percent so now overall this is transitioning from black to white but now we have a little bit of variation coming in via this sine wave so let's go and add another modifier on top of this i'm going to add a noise so now we've got a noise tab as well and this one is adding random color to the entire process and it's both subtracting it and adding it to our final number so you'll see in the general in the beginning it's bl it's dark and as we go to the end it's starting to get brighter because these are all getting added together um so that's all working pretty well uh, we've got different random seeds we could really crank the bias here so that these start going to more extreme colors um and we still should still be getting that kind of flicker back and forth based on our fast sine wave um, but now we've kind of got a complex animation going on here. There's a lot of different things. So what we can do to figure out what's going on is click on our output tab. And in our output tab, we're getting all kinds of feedback as to what is happening in our scene right now. So I'm going to hit stop. Uh, what? Okay. Well, I guess there's a lot moving, but uh, let's talk about what's going on here. We're going to skip this for a second. Well, I guess not. Uh, so here, here what we see is all of them being added together. This is all of our different tabs combined, showing us what our final output is. Now, if you move down to this one, we have our base tab, and you see we have a nice, steady transition where those are moving upward. Next up is our sine wave, and you see we're getting this not large effect, but it's just shaking back and forth a little bit. That's our 10%, and that's getting added on onto the base, which is getting turned into this master. And then we have our random noise, and you see it's going to these extremes, and it's moving really fast. So when you add all three of these sets together, we get the master tab, and these start sliding all in place, and that is how we're getting it. So let's say uh, this is starting to feel a little chaotic. Well, clearly we can see the one that's adding the most chaos is this noise. We can see right here from the feedback, that's where most of our motion's coming from. So you're like, okay, that's a little crazy. Now we can go back to our noise tab. We can even turn both on if we want to see both, but it gets a little uh, gets a little cluttered. So I'm going to just click on the noise tab. And there's a bunch of things we can do to slow this down so it's not quite so chaotic. For one, we could pull our bias back down, and now these aren't moving quite so extreme. Well, of course, that means if we go back to our output tab, these are moving around, but not in such a crazy way. In addition to that, we could also maybe pull our strength down in the noise. So it's only 25% of what it used to be. So now these are not moving all that much. And now, because these are way more subtle, this motion, we're much more clearly seeing it wiggle in here. And at the same time, that's kind of a good feedback to us, where if we look in our viewport here, we'll see we kind of are feeling that a little more, kind of that this sine wave, like wah, 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 wah. And the color isn't having as much of, a, of an effect. So our output tab is a really good way of seeing how all of our different parameters are combining to create this complex animation. Um, so that's that's all pretty straightforward. Uh, we can, if you have a ton of signals and you get all this visual feedback because so many parameters are being updated, we added a checkbox 
And if you turn that off, these won't refresh anymore. So these, these are still being calculated, but they're not refreshing in the interface. So it just can speed things up if you were visually looking at a ton of them. So we can turn that back on again so we get our feedback. Uh, we've got our little help button here. Hit the question mark. If you click on that, it will should lead to a link that you can watch this video. So maybe that's how you got here. Welcome. Uh, and then lastly is the volume. The volume, this might not work over really well actually on uh, on a color channel, but we can increase or decrease every, all the animation we've created globally by changing this volume. So if I drop this down to maybe 10%, what's going to happen is it's it can't get very far along its animation. Um, like I said, color is not a great example, um, but you still see it's changing a little bit. And then uh, inversely, we could maybe crank it up. I'm going to go, oops, not 20, I'm going to go up to 200. Now it's really quickly going to get super bright and it's maxing out. So we've maxed out all these colors when they get added together. So once again, not a great example uh, as far as volume, but this will multiply things. I guess just for the, uh, the sake of talking about that one, we're going to have this not drive the color anymore, but let's have it drive the position. So what's cool is all of our, uh, I guess we do have to set the values. So I'm going to have this, uh, let's see, it's going to travel up 1,000 over the course of this animation. And the sine wave is going to, let's just do the Y. Let's have the sine wave jiggle. Actually, we can say 1,000 because it's down to 10. And then we go to our noise and say 1,000, and it'll be the noise, and that's down as well. So now we're still getting that same output, and it's only coming from the middle one. Um, but you'll see as we, if I decrease this to a small amount, it's still doing our same motion, but it's not going as far. It's a global multiplier. And if I crank this way up, then it's going to shoot up and go 840% more than usual. So that will do it for our feedback. And in the next video, we are going to talk about keyframing. So I'll see you then.